you guys. You can be seated. You can be seated. Worship team, thank you so much. Worship team, thank you so much. Just in case if you were here for the first time and you didn't understand what just happened, I want to share something with you in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, um, verses 1 through 3. It says, follow the way of love and eagerly desire spiritual gifts, especially the gift of prophecy. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God. Indeed, no one understands him. He utters mysteries with his spirit. But everyone who prophesies speaks to men for their strengthening, encouragement, and comfort. And that's what you experienced today. Um, it was God just strengthening, encouraging, and comforting um, individuals and yourselves. Because guess what? You can be strengthened, encouraged, and comfort, comforted by a word that someone else receives. So God just wanted to do that for you guys today. He just wanted to strengthen you, encourage you, and comfort you, okay? Um, we will never in this ministry apologize for allowing the Spirit of God to move in this place because I believe that God is, is uh, I'm, uh, he's just doing something. Um, he is moving, and I just want to be a part of it. I just want to be a part of what he is doing, and so... Um, I, I, I thank you guys for being patient with us this morning. Um, and, I, and I do still, if you'll give me about 15 minutes, I know y'all saying he ain't gonna be able to do that. But I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. I might take 17, but I'm gonna be close. I'm gonna be close. I know, I'm gonna be close. Everybody said, okay. Everybody synchronize their watches. For the last few weeks, for about the last month, the title to the message is simply this, stuck in the middle. Stuck in the middle. See, I, the last month, God has been sharing this central theme with me, stuck in the middle, and I've been going, Lord, what is this? Lord, tell me what's going on. Lord, help me to understand this. And I've been asking, and I've been asking, and, and, and I've been questioning, and he took me back to a season in my life to help me to understand what he was trying to say. So that was a season in my life that I was having knee troubles. Anybody's body falling apart on you? Okay, I was having some knee troubles. And my knee was, it was bone on bone. I didn't have any cartilage, any tissue, none of that. It was bone on bone. And my knee was just rubbing together, bone on bone. And I went to the doctors and I tried everything under the sun. I tried everything. I tried to get them to fix it. They injected and extracted and, and moved and physical therapy and every, um, every possible option that's not even FDA approved, I tried it. It didn't even matter. It was so painful, I just needed it. I needed the pain to go away. Is that right, Jimmy? You just needed the pain to go away. I needed the pain to go away. And as I was going through this process, I was praying to God, God, you got to do something about this. Has anybody ever asked God that? God, you got to do something about this. So I began to pray. And then I went through all of this stuff. And then the doctor said, look, the only solution is for you to have surgery. You're going to have to have a knee replacement. I was like, I don't know that I want to do that. He said, but you're going to have to have a knee replacement. If not, this is what you're going to deal with. And if you don't resolve this knee, then it's going to destroy your other one. He said, so you need to do something. So I talked to my wife. We decided to do the surgery. And after the surgery, that was the worst two months of my life. That was the hardest two months of my life. That was the most painful two months of my life. But remember, I prayed for it. I prayed, God, do something. And he did it. And it was the most painful two months of my life. Has anybody ever prayed? And God showed up, oh, but it hurt. God showed up, but it hurt. 
And then that pain made you question whether or not you even made the right decision. It made you doubt whether you made the right decision because I was in pain. I was frustrated. I was hurt. I was, I, I was depressed. I was like, did I make the right decision? Did I hear you, God? Is that what you told me to do? I begin, the, I mean, no pain will make you question. See, because the reality was this. <laughs> I'd had the surgery and I was in pain. See, but I had come too far to go back. I couldn't undo what had been done. I had come too far to go back, but I hadn't gone far enough to get the promise yet. Listen to me. Some of you are right there in that place. <laughs> He said, my people are stuck in the middle. You're too far to where you can't go back. And sometimes God shuts the door and won't allow you to go back. That's what he did to me. I had the surgery. It couldn't undo what had been done. See, but I had gone too far for me to turn around, but I hadn't gone far enough to experience the restoration in my knee. Is there anybody in this place that's been praying for God to do something? Is there anybody in this place that's been praying for God to do something? There's something in your life you got to get rid of. There's something in your life that you need God to deal with. And you say, God, you're going to have to do something. And he says, baby, I'm coming. And he shows up on the scene, but now you're in pain. I know you're in pain, but baby, I need you to understand you're just in the middle. You've gone far enough to where you can't turn around. Turn to your neighbor and say, I can't go back. Turn to your neighbor and say, I can't go back. Woo! See, I can't go back, but you hadn't gone quite far enough. To put your hands on restoration yet. But I need you to know that restoration is coming. I need you to know that it's coming. Turn to your neighbor and say it's coming. I know it don't feel like it right now. See, because those two months when I was in pain, I couldn't do nothing. I couldn't put on my socks. I couldn't put on my big boy pants. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I couldn't do anything. My wife had to do everything for me. She had to dress me. She had to shower me. She had to do all of those things. Now, I do go back and ask her, can we go back to those days now? But sometimes she don't necessarily like that idea. But I couldn't do anything for myself. She had to help me. How many of you know when you're in the middle sometimes you need a little bit of help? <laughs> Woo! How many of you know you need a little bit of help sometimes? Sometimes you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it. God said two are better than one. Somebody say two. Okay. I just want to make sure you're still awake. Two is better than one. Sometimes community is what you need. Sometimes community is what you need to help you walk through the middle. <laughs> Listen to me, I'm, I'm on a time limit. Y'all already got me on a time limit. We're going to go to James chapter 1. James chapter 1. We're going to start in verse 2. And verse 2 says this, consider it pure joy. Mary, tell them, consider it pure joy. Pastor Henley, I, I, I can't, I, my bad, I called him Mary, I can't do that, it's Pastor Henley. Pastor Henley, Pastor Henley, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Somebody say he's talking to me. Okay. He's not talking to your neighbor. He said whenever, he said consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. 
Everybody said, no, nah, Pastor, I can't do that. Consider it pure joy. Let me share something with you. See, I believe that the church has done, the church of Jesus Christ, I believe the church has done an amazing job of teaching God's people how to have faith and how to believe. Okay? I believe we've done a good job with that. But you know why I believe the church has failed? See, I believe the church has failed to teach God's people how to suffer. I believe we have done a poor job of teaching God's people how to suffer. Because guess what? In life, James just told you that you are going to face trials of many kinds. So in other words, you know what he's saying? You are going to suffer. Woo, y'all quiet now. See, sometimes when we get saved, we think that because we know God now, we serve God. Well, God, I give to you. I serve. I do all of this stuff at the church, and you let this happen to me? You know different than anybody else. See, we haven't done a good job of teaching the church how to suffer. The Bible says no servant is greater than his master. My master is Jesus, and guess what? Jesus suffered. So if Jesus suffered, what makes us think we're not going to suffer? Oh, we quiet today now. Oh, we don't want to hear this. See, a few months ago, when I shared the theme for this year, woo, you should have, oh, if I could go back and play that service over. Let me tell you, you guys were excited. Everybody was filled with anticipation. Whoa, restoration is coming. And then the pain came. The suffering came. And then all of a sudden, we're not so happy about restoration anymore. I need you to understand something. I got a word for somebody today. God didn't call you to be stuck. The middle is just for a season. God didn't call you to be stuck in the middle. God didn't call you to be stuck in the middle. David told us, yay, though I walk what? Through the valley of the shadow of death. David didn't get stuck. He walked through it. See, you and I are going to have to learn how to walk through it. We're going to have to learn how to walk through it. Everything's not going to always be okay. Everything's not going to always go the way you think it should. Sometimes you're going to pray and you think God is going to answer one way and he's going to answer a totally different way. And it's not going to be the way you want it to be. It's going to hurt. But that doesn't mean that God doesn't love you. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. He's already proved his love. He gave his only son to go die for you. He loves you. He got too much invested in you. He got too much invested in you. Now he's looking for what? A return on his investment. Oh. Now he's looking for a return. According to this scripture, James is saying, now is not the time to be sad. He said, consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds. He said, now is not the time to be sad. <laughs> Now was not the time to give up. Now was not the time to give in. He said, it's the time for you and I to be joyful because God gives us a promise when it comes to suffering. Somebody said, well, what's that promise? Now, see, only three of y'all want to know. I need somebody to say, what's that promise? 
Okay, okay. The promise is this. It's in, you don't have to go to it. It's in 1 Peter 4.13, and it says this. It says, but rejoice in as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ, so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. So his promise is this. When you suffer with Christ, you will also experience his glory. <laughs> oh, come on now. His glory is going to be revealed in your life because of the suffering. Who wants the glory of God in their life? Who wants the glory of the Lord to be revealed in your life? If you want the glory, now is not the time to be sad. Now is the time to say, you know what, I might be suffering now. But I know that on the other side of this, there's the glory of the Lord that I'm going to get to partake in. Woo. See, nobody likes to suffer. But it's time for you and I to declare the glory of the Lord in our life. Verse 3 says this. It says, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Woo! See, this is the middle. This is the part nobody likes. This is the middle. This is when the testing of your faith and it produces perseverance. You know what perseverance is? It's someone who is not swerved from his deliberate purpose and his, and his loyalty to faith in God even in the greatest trials and sufferings. So in other words, let me share this with you. A faith not tested is a faith that can't be trusted. Oh, oh yeah. He came for me, so I got to come for you. <laughs> a faith that can't be tested is a faith that can't be trusted. God can't trust you if he can't test you. Woo! See, he says, if we're faithful in the little, if we're faithful in the little, then he can trust us with much. See, he needs, he's testing you. It's producing perseverance. You know how you get, I hear people all the time say this, man, I want to have faith like this person. Or I want to pray like this person. Or I want to preach like this person. Oh, but before you say that, baby, I need you to understand that that person had to go through some stuff. That person had to be tested to be able to, for God to trust them with the anointing that they have. It didn't come easy. You can't ride in on a shirt tail. How, what kind of just God would that be if he let me suffer for the anointing and all you get to do is walk in behind me? It doesn't work that way. See, God is producing perseverance in your life. Ooh, that's the middle. Somebody say, I'm in the middle. Yeah, baby. The middle don't feel good. See, I know we like the middle when we talk about Oreos. Everybody likes to open it up and eat the middle. I don't feel like I'm an Oreo right now. If it hurts. It's painful. It doesn't feel good. But guess what? God is doing something. See, that's what the psalmist David meant when he said, it was good that I was afflicted. Woo, who prays that? The psalmist David said, it was good that I was afflicted because it taught me how to live by your statutes. Woo! The only way you learn to live the way God wants you to is by him testing you and trying you. Somebody say, I'm in the middle. Okay? But I'm going to challenge you. 
don't get stuck. Jesus said, I came so that you could have life and life in abundance. He didn't come so that you could get stuck. He didn't come for you to stop in the middle. But then verse 4 says this, baby, and I promise you this is my last scripture. It says, let me see where I am. Man, it's, it, 17 minutes, I was close, baby. <laughs> verse 4 says, let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. But I need you to understand the most important part of this scripture is that first word. It says let. Woo! See, you and I have to give God permission for him to finish the work that he started in you. See, we pray, God, I want you to do this. And then when you're in it and it starts hurting, you say, oh, no, I don't want this no more. God, stop. Have you ever asked God for something and then he began to show you and reveal it to you and to the point that it became so overwhelming, you had to say, whoa, stop. Mm, I can't take it anymore. He said, let, somebody say let. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. See, you know what our problem is? <laughs> we want to skip the middle and we want to go to the promise. See, for us, the middle is not important. <laughs> we want the promise. See, the promise is what's important to us. We, we want to skip the middle. See, but I need you to understand, for Jesus, see, the middle is just as important as the promise. See, the middle is just as important as the promise. See, because it's the middle that develops character and skill in you so that when he gives you the promise, you can maintain it. There are some things I just can't give my 12-year-old daughter yet because she doesn't have the character for it. She hasn't developed the skill for it. See, because if I gave it to her now, she would destroy it. Ooh. How many of you know that God has a promise for you, but he just can't give it to you right now? Some of you, you couldn't handle the promise if he gave it to you right now. Some of you, if he gave it to you right now, you would destroy everything that he's trying to do. So he said, I need you to go through the middle. I don't need you to get stuck. I need you to walk through the middle. Because as you walk through the middle, see, when you come out on the other side, you will have the character and the skill that you need to maintain the promise. So I'm closing with this. Don't get stuck in the middle. You and I have a decision to make today. It's a personal decision for you. You and I have a decision to make. You got three choices today. Some of them are not good choices. You got three choices today. With where you are in this season of life, you got three choices. Number one, you can go back to where God brought you from because it's easier. It seems easier. Because it seems easier. You can go back to where God brought you from. But I'm going to give you a warning before you make that decision. The Bible says this. That if you allow, if you go back, it's going to be seven times worse than it was before. So if you go back, 
It might seem easier, but when you get there, it's going to be seven times worse than what it was before. And you're going to be wishing you were in the middle again. That's option one. I don't find that as a viable option. But see, I can't make that decision for you. Your second option is this. You could settle for where you are and say, God, this is all I want. But I need you to understand something. If you're not moving, you become stagnant. And if you're stagnant, you stink. Have you ever, have you ever smelt a puddle of water that's not moving and it's just sitting there? It's foul. Turn to your neighbor and say, that smell is me. Yeah. That's right. And it's funny on the surface, but the reality is somebody's going to make a decision to stay right where they are today. And you're going to stink. And you're going to wonder why you're over there by yourself and nobody wants to be around you. And you're going to try to blame everybody else when it was you that made the decision. So you can stay where you are and you can stink up the joint. But the only person you'll have to blame is you. See, I don't, I don't think that's a viable option. <laughs> but your third option is this. You can keep it moving and attain your promise. Tell somebody, keep it moving. Don't get stuck. Keep it moving. Keep it moving. Keep moving forward. I know it hurts. I know it doesn't feel good. I know it's not comfortable. I know you don't like what it is right now. But oh, when you come out, baby. Oh, when you come out on the other side. Oh, when you attain that promise. Oh, when restoration hits your household. When restoration hits your family. When restoration hits your marriage. When restoration hits your finances. You're going to look back and say, God, I'm so glad that I didn't quit. I'm so glad that I didn't give up. I'm so glad that I didn't choose to go back. Don't get stuck in the middle. You got a decision to make. We don't need to have an altar call for you to make that decision. You make that decision, and it's going to be between you and Jesus. But don't give up on what God has promised you. I know it seems hard right now, but it's only hard because you stuck, you're in the middle. The middle does not feel good. Don't quit. Don't give up. Keep pressing forward. Keep pressing forward. Because guess what you have living inside of you? You have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, baby. Come on. You got the government of God living on the inside of you. You don't even understand the power that you possess. I know you don't feel like it sometimes, but there's a power on the inside of you. And all you've got to do is begin to put one foot in front of the other. All you've got to do is begin to put one foot in front of the other. And as you do it, begin to declare that even though you don't see it, you know the promise is coming. Even though you can't feel it, you know the promise is coming. Even though it hurts, you know on the other side. Call those things that are not as though they are. Everybody bow your head. Father, I thank you this morning. I thank you for what you're doing. 
Lord, I thank you for the spirit of God that's in this place. And I thank you for you manifesting your presence. I thank you for your glory. And Lord, I thank you for your word that challenged your people. Lord, remind them that they're in the middle and the middle doesn't feel good. But the only answer is moving forward. We can't go back. We can't settle for where we are. We're going for the promise. We're reaching for the promise. Your word declares that if a man puts his hand to the plow and he looks back, he's not worthy of that which you have for him, Lord. So I pray that they would move forward and look forward and honor you with their life. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay.